right, so welcome back. And on this one, we need to talk about triggers and probabilities. So if you go to data, you will find them right there. It's going to be this trigger and this probability. And we're going to start with probabilities because it's the, you know, the most fun, I guess. So uh, this one works just like steps. And notice they are just very, very similar. But they, of course, they work in a different way. So right here, of course, this is going to go into eight different steps in this case. If you select the module, you can go up to much more, you know, a lot of more steps. You can go up to 64 and you can see it right there, you know, how it looks. But if I go down, down, and down, and down, we can go to something, you know, uh, like eight. Now, what this one will do is that it will output a value and the value depends on the probability uh, of how likely is going to be uh, kind of a triggering. So if it's all the way up, it means that it will trigger every single time. But if you are maybe on 50 percent, maybe you have a 50 percent of this one to chance, this one to trigger. So this is like a I want to say it's a random uh, but yeah, it's good. It is, you know, it depends on what you select right here is might might be triggering or might not. That's the whole idea. So, OK, you know what? I'm going to go right here. I'm going to make this uh, kind of a saw and I'm uh, just going to bring a filter so we can uh, kind of uh, create an example of, out of this. And I'm going to go and maybe do a little bit of cutting because if not, this one is just going to be a little bit too much. And just going to be converting the AR into something like an AD or something like that. Just going to go and make it like that. OK. So no, of course, every time I play a key, we are going to be just triggering whatever we have on the envelope. But maybe I want to trigger with the probability. So sometimes it's going to be triggering. Sometimes, you know, it will just not trigger. That's the whole idea. Now, remember, less than 50 percent is less likely to trigger. And as you get closer to the top, it's just going to be, uh, you know, when you're going to get more chances to trigger. So if I connect this here and disconnect this one right here, Sometimes it's going to be triggering and sometimes it will not trigger. So this is, you know, how it, why it's called probabilities. So sometimes it's going to do it, sometimes it will not. Now, if I go all the way up, notice that it's just triggering every single time. Now, if you right click, and this is something I forgot to, uh, let me just go right down here. Something I forgot to tell you on the steps as well, that when you were, whenever you click, right click right here, you can generate different types of waveforms. For example, you can just transform to something else, or maybe in this case, you can go maybe to a saw and it will just create a saw right here. And this is very helpful when you, for example, you have more than eight steps right now with maybe eight steps. It's just, you know, not a very good example, but if I just make it uh, much, much bigger, let me just go here and go all the way up to a lot. And I just create something like a saw is that it will give you that saw. Right. So let me just go back to eight steps. OK, so at the end of the date, the this one, what it will do, it will again just trigger depends on the probability. Now, of course, you can affect how fast it goes because you notice that we have the device face uh, in. We have the face in and we already talked about how this works. So if I bring uh, right here the face and then I go to face and I bring a scaler, for example, which is can affect how, you know, how fast it goes. A two to one ratio or we, maybe we can just go and make it go faster and again we already talked about this at this point all right so i'm gonna go right here and just bring a toggle okay so i'm gonna put a toggle right here so i can just turn it off when I, while i'm talking now this one notice that of course whatever instruction that you have right here uh, will be triggering or maybe not but then you have another one right here so what you know this one is doing so if we bring a display we can see what this one is going to do i'm going to go bring it right here just maybe connect it to this part and we can see that something else is going if i go slow on the mode we can see that the instruction is just a little bit different and uh yeah it's going up and it's going down so behind the scenes this just gives you a random and what it's doing is just using part of that random to, of course, trigger. And if I put it like that, if I bring it right here and disable and enable the toggle, notice that every line that goes above the zero line, zero crossing line, is just going to be the one triggering. If I go none, nothing is going to be triggered. But maybe this one, it will. Notice that this one is just triggering. So that's how, how it works behind the scenes. Uh, when it goes up to, you know, after over zero, it's going to trigger. That's how it works. All right. So let me just do something random right here. All right. 
Okay, so that's how it works. Now, of course, now we can use this one as an LFO instruction or just maybe as a random instruction instead of an LFO. Right, so now we are just using it to trigger the envelope, but you can use it for something else if you wanted to. Maybe, let me just put it right here at the top, and I'm going to put this one at the top as well. So I'm going to go and disconnect it from here, but I can go right here to I.O. and bring a modulator out, and we can use it as a modulation source instead of just, you know, uh, triggering something. So maybe I'm, I would like to do something like that on this one. I'm going to toggle in, uh, toggle on so we can hear something. And I'm just going to enable the retrigger. And maybe uh, in this case, just to get a better example, I want a little bit of sustain so I can hold the key. And we can see that it's going. Right, so we can use it like that. Right? We don't need strictly to uh, use it on a trigger. Right, so let me just go back to the AD we had before. And I'm going to go right there, just maybe put it, put this right here. And I'm going to remove the modulation because I want to use something else right now. I want to talk about the other part, which is going to be the triggers. Now, the trigger, in this case, it's what it is, what it sounds. It generates a number, an N triggers, it says right there, uh, evenly across each cycle. So, okay, so now we know it's talking about a cycle, and we already know how what that is. And uh, it's going to be uh, triggering something. So, okay, so I'm going to go and put it right here. So, notice it starts at some point, and at some points, then it's going to restart, and you have a number right here. So, this is the number of triggers that will uh, each cycle will just, you know, provide. And in this case, if I disable this right here, and I connect it right there, we know that it's going to be four on each cycle. Just going to trigger four times. And notice that every uh, every time it triggers is evenly separated. And it's triggering the whole time. Now, of course, the number of triggers, you can define it right here. So when I go right there, and I just go up on the number of triggers, it is going to do more and more and more. And you can go up to a lot. Right. So in this case, I'm just going to keep it maybe to eight. Why not? So this one, at the same time, just like this one, it will accept a face. So what we can use, we can use the same instruction we have right here, and we just connect it right there, right? And also what we can do, maybe we want to reset the face every time I uh, just press a key. So we can go uh, right here to the face, and we can find the reset right there. And every time I just play a, play a key, it will start from the beginning. If we want to go at the same rate we are using right here again we just can use whatever it is that we are using right here or maybe i just want to use the reset so it will reset the uh, cycle every time i play a key right so super cool right very easy to use all right so let me just toggle off so now the main problem is that this one, and I'm not playing anything. Notice that the yellow indicator right here is just saying you're not playing anything, and I'm not. So how can we, you know, we, we can uh, provide an instruction or just tell uh, the synthesizer, or the grid in this case, how, you know, uh, I want to use it whenever I play a key. I don't want this to sound forever or just toggle this instruction. No, I don't want to do that. So we can use the uh, logic and we're going to start using logic uh, this from this point because they're just very useful. So I'm going to bring an ant. And if you're on the, uh, let me just toggle off. If you are a developer, this is going to be very easy for you because this is like an if as else statement. If this uh, both conditionals are, uh, are just, you know, correct or are true in this case, uh, this one is going to let whatever is that you want to do pass. So let me just move this right here. So we have a trigger going on and just doing something and we know how it works. But I also want to control this and I want to do this, whatever it is that we are doing, when I press a key. And we know that that instruction is always going to be a gate. So if I bring a gate and just maybe uh, put it right here, if I nice select it, I'm going to press a new key, everything will always start. But right now, notice that right here on the gate out, is just telling you, dude, you're pressing a key. And whenever I release it, it's just gonna go all the way down. That's how the gate works. We already talked about this. So if I press and hold, it's just gonna be holding, and when I release, it's gonna die. Right? So what we can do, we can say, okay, I don't want to trigger it like this. I want to trigger to go to the end, and I want to grab this trigger and go to the end. So now if this one is doing a trigger, 
and I am uh, pressing a key and holding a key, the ant will just let something go true, uh, go through, right? So it's going to be true. If this one is it's true and this one is true, if both are true at the same time, everything, the whole, you know, com component, the whole conditional will be true. So this one will let the signal pass, whatever it is that we want to do pass. So if I play a key now, this one is going only going to be going to be triggering when I play a key and hold a key because both are true. And we can see it right here on the A and B. Notice right here we have an A and B. The A is just outputting something, and when the B goes true, goes on, it's letting whatever pass. And I release it, and you know, both the uh, one is true, the other one is not true, so nothing goes by. So, okay, so that's it, you know, pretty simple devices. Let's just bring a couple more things and trying to build something, something simple of this. Maybe I'm gonna bring another, uh, another AD. And since we are using a trigger, maybe we can use this trigger right here and use the, uh, right here, the, the, uh, the modulation out just to get some kind of modulation, right? Maybe I could just offset it. I'm gonna do a 10, 10 steps and I'm gonna go up in the rate of this one just to make something different. And maybe I'm gonna go to one to one. This one goes slower, this one goes a little bit faster. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna go right here, uh, go right there and do a little bit of resonance, modulation on the resonance with whatever we are doing with the probabilities. So sometimes it's gonna trigger, sometimes it will not. And do something like that, maybe something like that. You know, just trying to change the values. And right here, I'm just going randomly, right? right? That's the whole idea. And uh, maybe with this one, I'm going to be uh, doing a little bit of modulation on the cutoff. And again, I'm just kind of a flipping a coin right here. I'm just, you know, kind of a trying to do things. I'm trying to get maybe a cool sound out of this. If we do a play. And just, just make this one a little bit longer. Oh, made a mistake right there. Right, so let's just make it a little bit more stereo. Uh, I'm gonna go there, just make uh, get a little bit of that sweet stereo sound. All right, so maybe there. All right, so it doesn't sound like that bad. It's not that good, but you know we are able to get something out of this. All right, so let me just show you one one more thing. Uh, let me just uh, go maybe go this uh, down on this one. So right now, of course, this one it's outputting this instruction. And we are going up and down, up and down. And it's because we are going to positive and we are going to negative. But remember that we can change how this uh, behaves. We can maybe grab something out, a different modulator, and we can just use uh, the bipolar, the unipolar instruction of this. So I'm gonna go to level right here. Just gonna go right here to level. And if we go all the way here, we already used this one, but to turn a bipolar into, I'm sorry, we used a uni to turn it into a bi. Well, in this case, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna use a bipolar instruction, which is this one, and we're gonna turn it into a unipolar. And we are gonna use that instruction, I don't know, to do something else. I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'm gonna go to the decay. I'm just gonna make it really short, just something like that. And this instruction is just going to be modulating the AD in some fashion. All right, so something simple. If I just play it. All right, you know, it's not that bad. It's not the best patch I've ever created. But maybe let's just bring a little bit of delay like we always do. And just kind of uh, put the lipstick on a pick. Uh, I'm going to go right there, just a little bit of reverb. Let's just put it up right there. <laughs> All right, so, you know, it's not bad. All right, we can just adjust a little bit of what's going on right here. something like that and I'm moving this with the mouse of course and you know I kind of like that when I pray when I play key this one will move up and then at some point go down 
So you can easily do that with an envelope. Let's just kind of uh, bring an envelope where we have a little bit of, susta of sustain, right? Where we can control it a little bit better. And this one is going to be uh, my modulation right here. Now, instead of connecting this right here, maybe I just want to use it like this so we can see what we are doing. And I'm going to be doing something like that. Now, it needs to be a slow, a slow ish kind of instruction. So let me just go down this one so we can see all. That is right now, it's just super fast when I play a button, uh, play a key. Again, we want to do, we want to do a slow introduction. So, all right, so I want to do something like that. And then we go down. And remember, you can always adjust the curves right here if you wanted to. Let's just make it a little more, more linear. There you go. And if you go one, one, want to make it like that. Alright. So that's it. I guess that's the patch. Alright, so remember I'm going to be I'm putting or uploading uh, every patch that we create at the end of each uh, section of this series, I'm putting this on, uh, on on a download so you just can get it for free, you know, it's just download it, of course. And I'm going to be putting on the Patreon page, it's on the free side of Patreon, you just need to click the link and download from there, you don't need to pay anything, of course. Alright, so that's it. So remember, if you like what I do, if you like everything that we are doing so far on the grid, uh, remember to like and subscribe and if you have the money maybe just check patreon and you maybe you can buy me a coffee and support the channel at the same time everything's done so see you on the next one and the next one is going to be fun we are going to be talk we're going to talk about shapers we're going to talk about all of these modules right so see you on the next one